Good evening. Welcome to the City Council meeting of Wednesday, November 7th, 2nd, 2016. Can I have the roll call, please? Dan Carey. Present. Peg Conniff. Here. Salem Derby. Present. Jennifer Hayes. Here. J.P. Gazinski. Here. Joe McCoy. Here. Dan Rist. Here. Tamara Smith. Here. Joy Winnie. Here. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have no approval of minutes today, so if anyone here from the public would like to address the council on something other than on public hearings, please step to the podium. Okay. we we'll do it later. Um, communication? Sure. Okay. Okay, um, communications from elected officials, boards, committees. Uh, Councilor Kwasinski, I think you had at least a couple things, one or two things. Yeah, a couple of things. Just um, election day is proceeding now and is coming up on Tuesday the 8th. Any time anytime between now and the 8th? Is there some mm -hmm. time periods? No. T tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, 8 to 5, Friday, 8 to noon. Tomorrow, 8 to 5, that's uh, the uh, Thursday. Thursday, the 3rd, 8 to 5, and Friday. Eight to noon. Eight to noon, and then election day, November eighth. The hours. Seven a.m. Eight p.m. Seven a.m. to eight p.m. I'd like to just speak for a moment about question two. Uh, as you may know, the East Hampton City Council passed a resolution uh, encouraging folks to vote no on question two, and the school committee of East Hampton also did, along with two hundred and six other local school committees across the Commonwealth. I'll be voting no on question two, and I wanted just to share my reasons for that. While some charter schools have produced excellent results, so most districts, so have most district schools produced the excellent results. I believe the state and local officials should focus on improving the schools, which by law must serve all of our students. That's the 96% who attend traditional schools. Until the funding mechanism is changed, so that each student who attends a chartered school does not take dollars away from the traditional public schools. In the past year, we're losing $400 million across the Commonwealth. That must stop. What does this mean for East Hampton residents if no one has a child in school? Well, if you don't have a child in, in, in either a public school or a charter school, maybe it doesn't, you don't think it means anything. But it means that the child takes the money from the traditional public school, but the costs remain with the school. Fewer electives can be offered, fewer art and music programs, libraries get cut, supplies get cut. Eventually, the system starts to crumble and we're not able to provide for those 96%. Eventually, the schools, I believe, will turn to the communities and request an override, not to make their schools better or the best in the country, but to stop the walls from crumbling. But by then, it may be too late. East Hampton, I believe, has worked hard to improve public schools and your public education experience. Voting no will help keep quality in local public education for the 96% who attend district schools. Please, vote no. On question two. <coughs> on another matter, uh, on November 15th, the planning board will be talking uh, and entertaining a proposal uh, from Cumberland Farms to place a building on Route 10, I believe near the East Hampton Savings Bank in that range of Route 10. And uh, Cumberland Farms, I believe, will be proposing a gasoline station at that location. I'm told that the it will look somewhat like the location at North Road and Route 10 in Westfield, if you're familiar and go that way. But I just wanted to be sure everyone in the district knew and the folks in the city. In some ways, I think it gives us an opportunity that if we do have a new gas station in town, I would love to see a, a generator on site to assure that the public if the power grid is down, is able to get gasoline. I'll be making that proposal to the planning board. Uh, if anyone else has any other thoughts on the subject, please attend that meeting November 15th. 
Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Any, Councilor Hayes? Um, East Works Open Studio is this Saturday from 10 to 5. Everybody is invited to attend and tromp all over the place. There will be tours and all the studios will be open and then there will also be some food trucks, I think, as well. So please come. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments or questions? Okay. Uh, communications, Councilor Derby. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to remind people that um, Veterans Day, Friday, November 11th, uh, the East Hampton Veterans Council will hold their annual ceremony. It is going to begin at 10 a.m. at the American Legion Post 224 in East Hampton. Okay, thank you. American Communications, nothing today? Okay, moving on to standing committees. Con Finance Council Wrist. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one item that did not require a public hearing to bring forward. The Finance Committee voted to approve the establishment of a donation account which was requested by the mayor and the finance director. This donation account allows for donations that are non-specific to, for instance, uh, a specific item um, that we already have donation accounts for. If someone donated funds and did not want them to be used for operational expenses, i.e. somebody's salary, there was no place to put this money except in the general fund someone had wanted to donate funds to um, just give them to the city, but wanted to support an event, um, a, a, a parade or something we've been doing in the past, but there's no place for that money. So this is purely an accounting measure to make sure there's a place for that money. And of course, the, the city council will always be notified of, of any use of funding from any donation account. So uh, if there's no questions, I'd like to move that we approve this establishment, and I'll do so in the form of a motion to approve the uh, donation account as proposed by the mayor. So moved. Can you read it like this? She wants you to read it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I move to approve the establishment of a donation <coughs> account pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53A. <coughs> Approval is hereby given to establish an account to receive donations for the following for the purpose of funding community needs and events executed on the 13th day of October 2016, signed by the mayor. Second. Into a second. Okay. A motion a second. Any questions or discussions on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank motion you. Passes. Continuing, uh, we will meet again on November 9th. Uh, our next finance committee meeting will be in room one at five o'clock. Um, at that time, we'll be discussing other items on the agenda. Um, I would like to also do new business, Mr. President, mm -hmm. if that's allowed. Yes. And for a first reading, I'd like to m read a supplemental appropriation request hereby made for the following appropriation. The amount is $100,000 to be appropriated from the free cash, $100,000 to be appropriated to the OPEB stabilization account, $100,000 to transfer funds into the OPED the stabilization account. Second reading is a supplemental appropriation request. The amount requested is $356,536.50 to be appropriated to the CPA Historic Preservation Account, 12,774. I'm sorry, to be appropriated from the CPA Historic Preservation Account, $12,774, the CPA Reserve Fund, $154,212, and the CPA undesignated fund, $189,550.50, for a total of $356,536.50, to be appropriated to the City Clerk Vital Records Preservation and Restoration, $12,774, and the Cook County Road Drinking Water Supply and Open Space Protection Project, $343,762.50. The amounts requested will be used for the following purpose, to provide funds to the City Clerk Vital Records Preservation and Restoration Project and the Cook County Road Drinking Water Supply and Open Space Protection Project. Mr. President, I move that these two appropriations be sent to the Finance Committee for review. Second. Right, motion a second to move the two supplemental appropriations to finance. Additional discussion. 
Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. I also further move, Mr. President, that the aforementioned appropriation request be set for public hearing at our next regularly scheduled uh, City Council meeting. Is there a second? Both of them? Yes. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to, to schedule a public hearing for November 16, 6 15 p.m. in these chambers for the supplemental appropriations of the $100,000 and the $356,000, $536,50. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. Um, <coughs> I believe, except for public hearings, that. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Yes, that it concludes. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think we can get Public Safety Councilor Hayes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we are moving forward with the Mobilite Pole Location Cell Tower request on Liberty Street. Our next task was to send in, we wanted to send them a list of our questions prior to setting up the appointment. We have done that, and then our next move is to send them a list of open appointments, which we just figured out tonight. So we will take care of that email. And then um, I would like to try and meet with the subcommittee prior to us meeting with the Mobilite. There's been some new information um, that needs to be discussed in a public meeting. Okay. And then ongoing is the request to allow on-street parking on a section of Pleasant Street. And we're still working on the language for that. And I am trying desperately to get in touch with the Pleasant Street variety owner, but she doesn't seem to be in. And I keep leaving my name and talking, but I'm really uncomfortable with like making a move on Pleasant Street without speaking to that business owner. So mm -hmm. I shall try some more. Okay. And that concludes? Thus concludes. We'll probably squeeze in appointments, Councilor Smith. Okay, uh, the City Council Appointment Subcommittee met earlier tonight at 515, and we had a number of mayoral appointments to discuss as a group. And so we have um, quite a few. I'm going to split these into four groups. All of these were approved by the subcommittee as uh, two to zero. So the first first group of names that I'm going to bring forward for consideration from the <coughs> full city council all have a term expiration of 1231-19, and these are all um, these are all committee members that have already been appointed, and this would be their second term. So I move to move the following candidates to the full council for consideration for their board or committee role. First one is Catherine Kroll with the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership with a term exp expiration of 1231-19. All of the following will have the same term expiration. Jana Tetrell for the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership. Chester Sekletsky for the Aquifer Protection Committee. David Zagorski for the Board of Assessors. Paul Duda for the Board of Public Works, Audrey Brown for the Council on Aging, Estelle Staz for the Council on Aging, Beverly Wadika for the Historical Commission, Wendy Hammerell for the Manhan Rail Trail Committee, <coughs> Stephen Donnelly for the Manhan Rail Tr Committee, Beth Tiffany for the Nashawanic Pond Committee, uh, Liz Provo for the Nashawanic Pond Committee, Marge Prendergast for the PLAE Board of Directors, Chester Seklecki for the Planning Board, Anthony Carella for the Plumbing and Gas Inspector, Brian Fink for the Registrar of Voters, and Frank Picard for the Veterans Council. And again, these all have a term expiration of 1231-19. I did notice you just skipped over Andy Hunter just because it's very easy to do, but so. Oh, oh sorry, That's and right. Andy Hunter for Parks and Recreation. Second. Yeah, we have a motion to second to accept those mayoral appointments with expiration date of 1231-2019. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion Aye. passed. I'll one abstention. I'm abstem abstaining from Beth Tiffany. She's my first cousin. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, John Fitzgibbon for the city attorney, and that's a term expiration of 1231-17. So I'd like to make a motion to... I have his name accepted by the full committee for consideration. Second. Okay, a motion a second to submit John Fitzgibbon to city attorney expiration date 1231 2017. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. 
Okay, next is Megan Murphy for the ECA Plus Grants Committee with a term expiration of 8 9 2019. Okay. Is there a second for that? Second. Okay, I'm, so we have a motion and a second to approve Megan Murphy to ECA Committee expiration 8 9 2019. Additional questions or comments? I just only make the comment that Megan is new to the committee, so that's why she wasn't put in the first batch. She's not a reappointment. Yes. She is a reappointment, but the she term is? expiration is Oh, the is term of expiration is August 9th. Oh, August. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. She never asked her. Okay, so there's a motion to second. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. And the next mm -hmm. one is for John Sheehan for Parks and Recreation with a term expiration of 12 31 17. Second. Second. Oh, motion second for John Sheehan. Parks and Rec, a little bit different, 12 31 2017. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. And uh, Sean Casey is, um, sorry, Sean Casey has been appointed for the ECA Plus Grants Committee. He's the only person on this list that is a new appointee. Um, he's already part of the artist community within East Hampton and has been working with ECA Plus and this would expand his position to an appointed committee position. So I'll bring his name forward next. Second. Second. Okay, motion and second to approve Sean Casey. Any additional questions or comments? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. <clears throat> and the last one I have for approval for consideration from the full city council is Greg Rowland for the CPA committee. And this is a city council president reappointment with a term expiration of 12 31 19. Second. Okay, motion second to approve uh, Greg Rowland, CPA, 12 31 19. Councilor Rist. Uh, as the CPA committee chairman, I must tell you that Greg has been absolutely exceptional in his diligence with the committee. He is, does his homework, and um, Mr. President, you've made a great appointment once again. I think this is uh, something I'm very happy. All of these appointees are volunteering to serve our city, and I thank them. And Greg is very welcome on our committee. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Mr. President, I move the public hearings yeah. be open. Second. Okay, a motion to second to approve public, open public hearings. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Public hearings are open. Answer, risk. First on the agenda is our tax classification. This is common. We do this every year. And to be honest, I don't think it has changed in many years. <laughs> the Board of Assessors, in a letter to us, with all of them approving, have approved a single tax rate for all classes of property. No open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. If you'll notice in your, each of those different items have been defined for you. Um, also given to us is the total value of property. It's over a billion dollars. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't know, I just saw that. Uh, the, uh, our, board, our assessor is here today and one of our men members of the Board of Assessors, if you have any questions. We always debate whether or not we <coughs> want a business uh, tax rate and as explained quite eloquently by both uh, Lori and uh, Peter, the uh, use of a business tax rate would be counterproductive and would not really provide us with any additional revenue and actually would turn businesses away from the community. So we've never, as long as I've been on the council, thought of a business tax rate. And as you can see, our residential percentage is 86 or 87 percent. So it's not a lot that we would gain by that. If you have any, if you have any questions, uh, they are here to answer your questions. Yeah, before I uh, does anyone have questions for them to call up? Or if, if not, then I'll just, we'll just proceed. Okay, uh, I guess not then. Uh, anyone from the public who would like to address the council on this appropriation? I mean, this classification. You know, Councilor Rist. Thank you both. I move that the City Council accept the East Hampton Board of Assessors recommendation for tax classifications for fiscal year 2017 with the following provisions. A single tax rate for all classes of property, no open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. Second. Okay, a motion a second to accept the 2017 tax classification. Some questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. President, we have a request from the police department for a repeater. 
which uh, I was fond at the committee to mention that I knew what it was. It actually is an amplifier, if I might, which amplifies radio signals that each officer wears through our main station so that the entire city of East Hampton, which is a fairly large geographic area, um, allows officer to officer communication. And before I really, they have now one old 42 year old backup and a 10 year old unit. They need a new one because the 42 year old backup simply isn't capable of doing its job anymore. And uh, the new one, although refurbished, we were promised has a 10 is a lot ten thousand dollars cheaper and parts are certainly available for the new one we're going to get and i'll allow uh, i'll ask uh, chief alberti and i want to tell you <laughs> no he is temporarily appointed uh, so i think it's appropriate okay. to say chief and i thank you i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you've done for me and my family <laughs> and i want to thank you for staying in east hampton when the fbi and the dea could have snatched you at any moment thank you and this counselor certainly thanks the mayor for appointing you. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. So now, evening, you, now you have to do your job. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Um, Robert Alberti, police captain, acting police chief <laughs> right, uh, for the city of East Hampton. Give that. <clears throat> We're seeking $10,565 to replace uh, a backup repeater. Some of the uh, paragraphs that I that I wrote for this request so no longer apply because as of Saturday our backup repeater went completely dead. So we are now. <laughs> well. <laughs> so it w wasn't in uh, uh, regulations with FCC, and it was intermittent at best, and it was 42 years old. Uh, but now it is no longer. Uh, so now we are running without a backup repeater, uh, which creates a problem for us if our main repeater goes down, which sometimes it does. Uh, the October storm is a good example of that. We lost our main repeater. Um, and we lost the backup one. Uh, we wound up going uh, on the Mount Tom uh, Wimlac channel, which is Western Mass Law Enforcement channel, which we can communicate through all of Western Mass. The problem with that is everybody else is also communicating on it, and so we may be dealing with an issue here in East Hampton, but somebody in Pittsfield is listening to us as we go on and on and on. Uh, so usually our conversations on Wimlac are very brief. They're for either pursuit going to another district or mutual aid for another district. Very brief, very very simple. So on the, the for the October storm, both repeaters went down. I actually had uh, officers, including myself, traversing the mountain with uh, cars trapped and wires down, and we lost communication with uh, dispatch, which, which it was a huge, huge issue. Fortunately, we had the wherewithal to quickly jump on the WIMLAC channel, but we really need our own backup. To that end, the backup repeater will allow us to um, have a secondary channel that we can communicate throughout the whole city so we could be doing either details, um, covert operations with the detective bureau, and have citywide communication to include dispatch. Right now it's just radio to radio on like a detail or a, um, um, uh, a covert operation with the, within a detective bureau. So if they start drifting apart from one another, from one end of the street to another, they will lose communication. The backup repeater will allow citywide communication uh, on this other channel. I brought my radio expert here, Officer Ed Murray, in uh, for questions because uh, he's the uh, he'll have the nuts and bolts of it. I can give you a brief overview of my knowledge of it, but I'm certainly not the expert in it. Any uh, councilors have questions for either the chief, Councilor Derby? I'm just curious. Um, so this repeater is as old as I am. So <laughs> I'm a little sad that it's dying already. <laughs> um, but you know, it seems like uh, this technology is might be dated. Is there is there is this something that you foresee? You know, having the wherewithal to to stick around for an extended period of time, or is there going to be a transition to a new technology? Or the repeater, the repeater technology is going nowhere. That's that is here to stay. It's just the amplification of the radio signals. Where it's going to is it's going towards digital communications and more encrypted stuff with the digital and the P25 APCO certifications. But those, when you start talking into those, you're talking $25,000, dollars $40,000 for a basic system. We don't need that. No. Um, this, this town is way too small for that. That's for places like Springfield, Worcester, Boston, who are all switching over to this P25. That's why we can get this stuff refurbished and cheap because these guys all had this stuff sitting in their radio rooms and now they're pulling it all out. They refurbish it and they sell it to us 
at a very reduced rate. A third of the money. Yes. Because even like the, the repeater that we're looking at is the MTR 2000, and the, the total price with new antenna cabling and everything is in the $10,000 range. If we were to go to the MTR 3000, which is the newest current model, now you're jumping that price with cabling and antenna up into the $20,000 range. So the, the repeater technology is changing dramatically, <coughs> but the actual use of a repeater is not going anywhere. Okay. Okay. Additional questions for either officer? How old is the? I'm sorry. No. How old is the one we're purchasing? It's the one we're purchasing. I don't have the actual year of of uh, manufacturing, but it's within the past five or six years that the MTR 2000s came out. When did the fire okay. department get them? Uh, they got theirs about four years ago, yeah. and schools picked one up two years ago, I think. Yeah, so two to four years. Yeah. Okay. So it's not that it's old. A, it's the exact equipment. same uh, piece of equipment that the fire department currently uses. Okay. And as well as the highway, the DPW, and the schools, it's all the same equipment. Okay, okay. Councilor Kwasinski. Uh, just a quick question: Does that repeater enable you to communicate not only with police officers but the DPW and the fire department? No, also, it does not. Because not? what happens is with radio communications, you have what's called UHF, ultra high frequencies, and VHF, which very high frequencies. They run on different platforms, so one platform cannot talk to the other. But this does give you the backup you need. For all police systems. Correct. If if either of these repeaters go down, we still have the second repeater to go right over to, and it's a seamless. Excellent. Okay. Other any additional questions, Councilor Riss? Uh, taking Councilor Krasinski's question a little further, and it's an excellent question. You simply call dispatch, who has complete communication with any other service. So if you need fire or DPW service, that's correct. Service, we can go right through that. It's, it, it's, it's very really fast. Right. I mean, it's not like we're we're losing a step if we. No, it's the dispatcher basically talking to talking to my officers or our officers, and then moving their finger to the next button and talking to DPW or fire. But that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions or comment, officers? Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. If there's anyone from the public who would like to address the council on this uh, appropriation, please come to the podium and state your name. Get on scene, Councilor Rist. I move that the following supplemental appropriation request be approved by the City Council. The amount requested is $10,565. It is being appropriated from free cash to be appropriated to Capitol Police Repeater Package, $10,565 for the purpose of providing funds to replace a 42-year-old repeater that is no longer operational. Second. A motion a second to approve the supplemental appropriation of $10,565. Additional questions or comments? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. The last item on the uh, agenda is one that I really like doing, <laughs> and that's <laughs> saving money from our free cash account. <coughs> um, we've been requested to put $750,000 of free cash into two general stabiliza two stabilization accounts. And I must say, we've been doing this for a few years, and the fact that we have a lot of free cash is really a testament to the financial stability and financial management of our finance director and our mayor and the entire finance department, and the fact that our departments don't just spend money a lot of free cash is returned funds from budgets that aren't used, so it can be used. It allows us to save money. It allows us to provide capital equipment that we've been spending, like a repeater. And I think that's wonderful because without it, we would not have the ability to do. I remember a few years ago, and I think some of the counselors were here, where we had trouble getting police cruisers and we had to wait until we had some free cash or ability to do that. The, cap the capital stabilization account, in fact, provides a buffer in case we don't have enough free cash for a major expense, such as suddenly we need a new fire truck or something. Um, so the Finance Committee happily approved uh, this request. The Mayor and the Finance Director are here if you have any questions. It's rather straightforward. Okay. Do we, the Mayor, Finance Director, want to make any comments on this now? Okay. And additional, Councilor Quisen, I just wanted to reiterate what Councilor Rist had said, and the mayor, the finance director, but the department heads and the folks in the departments are not making the requests and the demands to spend money because there's some money happens to be in the account. That's not what local government really is about. It's about spending what's needed in an appropriate fashion to maximize services to the public. We're doing that here in East Hampton. I'm very proud of that. 
I wish that would happen on every level of government, and we'd never hear the stories of, geez, the money's there, let's spend it. We turn it back in, in at the end of the year, and it goes into free cash, and we can put it back into stabilization to make East Stanton stronger. Thank you very much to sure. each member. Uh, Mayor, catch you. Thank you for your, your kind thoughts and words. So um, what this is exactly what you're looking at is obviously we've, um, I've established the capital stabilization plan and also we have the general stabilization plan. So uh, a lot of your counselors will remember um, t typically when I do the capital um, uh, program every year, we had maybe $13 million worth of capital requests mm -hmm. and there were years where we were able to honor none. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is this is actually just uh, saving for the future so that we make sure things like that don't happen again. When I took office, we had uh, our fleet schedule was pretty, pretty scary, and we weren't able to um, do the cuts that we've had over the years, weren't able to meet in some years none of our capital requests. So this is an insurance that we will, and that's why I um, created the capital stabilization plan. And as you can see, um, as soon as free cash was certified, uh, we sent the, uh, a, a good list of transfers to the council f uh, for the approval, f um, for funding approvals that I put through. So this is what it is, and it's just to ensure that in the future, um, and also you never know what's coming our way. We always prepare for 9C cuts. So um, you know, building these up like this is just, is just the way that, you, that we need it to be. Great. Thank you. Uh, you finished with your perspective? Yeah, you have to move it forward. I know, I know. I want to see oh, anyone from the public want to come on that appropriation? No? Okay. Council Riss? Uh, yes, Mr. President, I will move that the Council approve the supplemental appropriation request. The amount requested is $750,000 to be appropriated from free cash, $750,000 to be appropriated to general stabilization 84 account $250,000 capital stabilization account 85 $500,000 for a total of $750,000 uh, the amount would be requested for the following purpose to transfer funds into general stabilization and capital stabilization second Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the supplemental appropriation of $750,000 from free cash into the general stabilization funds. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain? Motion passes. Mr. President, I move the public hearings be closed. Second. Second, on motion and second to close public hearings. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain? Motion passes. Um, like, let's see. I guess we'll come back to new business later for Councilor Smith, but in the meantime, oh, you're not done with your report either. So I want to go back to appointments, Councillor Smith. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry if I interrupted you. But we That's now. fine. I had fine. gotten through all of the mayoral and city council president appointments. So that, that part is done, and all I have left is new business. Right. Did I just hear you say yes. you wanted to wait till the no, end? No, I, I was oh, just thinking because oh, okay. you have to make a set appointment. Oh, well, so go ahead and do that now then. Okay. We have six six appointments to move to the subcommittee uh, appointment subcommittee and so I'll read the names and the term expirations uh, Jonathan flag for the Department of Building Commissioner with a term expiration of 1231-19 Robert Alberti for the Chief of Police for 1231-19 David Motter as the Fire Chief 1231-19, John Bruner for the Historical Commission, 1231-19, Jane Kowalski, Housing Authority, 1231-19, and Keisha Zulo for the Nashawanic Pond Committee with a term expiration of 1231-19. Second. A motion second to move six appointments to mayoral's subcommittee appointments. Any additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain? Motion passes. Our next appointment is going to be on Wednesday, November 16th at 515. And we have asked 
Robert Alberti to come speak with the subcommittee in regard to the chief of police appointment and we'll also be extending an invitation to Jonathan Flagg for the building commissioner. So if any councilors would like to talk to see, speak to these uh, applicants that would be your time to do it if you want to talk to them in person about that. Mm -hmm. And seeing that I have no further business and thus concludes. Okay. Thank you. Now, Council, Ordinance Council Derby. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Ordinance Subcommittee did meet last Wednesday, the 26th of October, uh, where we did review, we had a short meeting, it was two hours long. Um, we reviewed the food truck ordinance, uh, and as well as looking at the um, plastic bag uh, issue. Uh, I feel like we made pretty significant progress on both fronts. Um, we are meeting again next Wednesday let me just pull up my calendar to make sure I get the date right but it will be at six o'clock here at 50 Payson and it is November the 9th so November the 9th 6 p.m. here we will meet again we do have a draft of the food truck ordinance that we're working from now um, and we're trying to kind of make sure that we are um, doing our due diligence so we're continuing to work on it okay. and that concludes Great. Property, Council Kwasinski. Property, nothing on the agenda. Okay. No report. Rules and Government Relations, Council Risk. No report, Mr. Clark. Okay, we have no old business or new business. Just uh, uh, mentioning what uh, Councilor Kwasinski mentioned earlier, remember that this Tuesday is Election Day, so please get out and exercise your right to vote. Um, and if we do have early voting this year, again, as uh, for during the day on Thursday and up until noon on Friday. So please, if that is at work, fits your schedule, remember to do that. So uh, that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Ooh, second. Okay, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. See you on the 16th.